Okay, today we're going to do a quick overview of the wireless channel. So we have a transmitter labeled TX and a receiver labeled RX, and we assume that the transmitter transmits radio waves from an antenna, and they travel towards the receiver, and they reach the receiving antenna. And by the time they reach the receiving antenna, we assume that the sphere that's radiating from the transmitter can be approximated as a plane at the receiver. So we call these plane waves. And we also note that the transmitter and the receiver are separated by some distance, R meters. So the question we have is how do we know how much power that we transmit gets received at the receiver and the Fries equation provides us an optimistic but useful approximation. The real channel that we look at in a wireless system is typically worse and it's primarily due to fading and absorption, uh, two topics that you would find out more about in communications classes. Okay, so we're going to assume that we have an isotropic an antenna and an isotropic antenna radiates equally in all directions. So basically what's happening is that spreading the power equally out across the surface area of the sphere that it's radiating uh, away from the antenna on. So what we can do is calculate the power density at any position that's R meters away from the transmitter as PTX divided by four pi times R squared. And this is in watts per meter squared. So this is just the power transmitted divided by the surface area of a sphere that's R meters away from the transmitter. If we use a non-isotropic antenna, then it can provide a directional gain towards the receiver. Almost all antennas are non-isotropic, uh, as an isotropic antenna would be something like a point charge in space, which we can't realize physically. So if we use a non-isotropic antenna, all we need to do is modify the power density at the receiver by the gain of the transmitting antenna. If the receiver has an antenna with an aperture area, A sub E, then the power received is just PRX equal to now, this power received is in watts as now we have the aperture area picking up the power in a given unit area of the transmitted waveform at the antenna. The aperture area of the antenna is related to the gain of the receiving antenna and the wavelength of the frequency being received. And hence A sub E is equal to the wavelength squared times the gain of the receive antenna divided, divided by four pi. If we combine the results, we can now find that the power at the receiving antenna is given by the following. Transmitted power times the gain of the transmitting antenna times the gain of the receiving antenna times the wavelength of the frequency being transmitted and received squared divided by the surface area of the equivalent spherical volume. From this, we can write the path loss as the ratio of the power received 
to the power transmitted as 4 pi r over lambda squared times 1 over the transmitting antenna's gain times the receiving antenna's gain. And so we have here a geometric and frequency dependent parameter and a transmitting and receiving antenna parameter. And this more or less tells us how much power we get across the channel just given physical distances and some basic characteristics of a transmitting and receiving antenna. So with that, we'll stop and we'll start getting into some more hardware oriented topics such as impedance matching in the next lectures.